the end of everything lead singer Joel Staniszewski joining us as he does every week, but under a different guise, usually not as lead singer of a hardcore metal band. Is that what it is? I mean, I always thought it was more metal punk or what, what, what's the... Yeah, I guess hardcore is, is metal meets punk, so that sounds like a, a pretty uh, good title, I guess. Well, the, the cool thing things. about it is Joel's band, The End of Everything, uh, was featured on a pretty prominent industry website called noecho.net, and I will uh, post a link to that uh, when we uh, post the podcast. And uh, the headline says, The End of Everything, Las Vegas Metallic Hardcore Band Closes Out 2020 with Debut EP with uh, comments in there from our Joel Staniszewski explaining his Buffalo roots and how it's affected uh, his, uh, his music much more so than the West coast scene. And um, so everybody check that out. And uh, it's, it's pretty cool because uh, Joel has been kind enough to uh, send along some of his music for us to use here as bumpers uh, during the show. And it's just, uh, it's good to see Joel getting some uh, music run, not just uh, sports betting stuff. The, the two lives yeah, this Jack, man leads. Jack of all trades. <laughs> it was pretty cool. What's it like to be featured in this, uh, at this uh, website? Because uh, it's as awesome. you were telling yeah, me, it's a, it's a big deal. Yeah, we've, we've had a couple of features. Um, Brooklyn Vegan did a video premiere, um, No Echo, which is, to me, is a huge, a huge accomplishment to be, to be featured on that website. And there's another site that uh, I believe is called Outburn that actually is streaming our entire EP uh, today it started today, so it, it doesn't officially get released until tomorrow. So on you know tomorrow, um, all of the songs will be live on Spotify and Apple Music and wherever you stream music, and uh, records and T-shirts and everything are on uh, pre-order on the label's website, which is War Against Records. Uh, yeah, it's just awesome. It's just a really good feeling to to have somebody more than one somebody like hear your band and appreciate your work and your effort and want to talk to you about stuff. So it's it's a it's a great honor for us. Well, congratulations on your success uh, already on this EP and and continued success too. Because let's hope it's just rolling, right? I mean, you did, getting a, getting featured yeah. at uh, noecho.net is is not the conclusion uh, that. The end Got of everything way to go. looking for, right? Um, right, for sure. And, and continued success on your picks, Joel, because you remain uh, a winner and uh, padding your margin as the season rolls to an end here. Joel Staniszewski gave us uh, one, two, three, four, five bets last week. He went three and two. We'll go over that. But he's 22, 14, and three on the year. Uh, that's against the spread. That's uh, with... Uh, money line over under. I mean, this is not just, uh, Hey, let's uh, pick the winner here. This is uh, for money. This is for, uh, for reals. And uh, let's just go over the picks last week. Maybe you have an explanation or you want to elaborate. I don't know, but uh, he gave us three bonus picks last week. Titans minus seven over Jacksonville. That was a win. Seahawks minus 13 and a half over the jets. And despite that fat spread, that was still an easy win. Uh, Chiefs minus seven over the Dolphins. Lost that one by a point. And the plucky Dolphins were, uh, they were a bit of a surprise, but uh, that, that was a spoiler for you. That was a loss. Bill Steelers over was a loss. Um, and the Bills could have scored at the end of the game if they really wanted to. Uh, and we for can sure. get into that. I wrote about it, in fact, uh, this week at The Athletic regarding the way the Bills killed off that game. Um, almost to the point that I thought the Steelers were begging for the Bills to score. It almost would have been more merciful than just watching the clock, the clock dwindle down without right. a chance to get the ball back. Uh, and then Bills on the money line. That was a winner, but you gave up some value on that, uh, going on the money line right. uh, with the favorite. Uh, but still, three wins, two losses, yearly, uh, yearly record right now, 22-14-3. You got to be happy about that. For sure. Um and our listeners should be happy about that if they've been paying attention and actually placing these wagers. Yeah, so I, I did play a couple of those games. I did not play the Chiefs game pregame, um, 
But when they were down, was it 14 nothing? they were down? Or was it 10 nothing? early in the game? They were down by a bunch. Um, so I thought, let me just log into my account real quick and see what the money line is now for the Chiefs to win, which pregame, I don't even know what it was, $4, $5 favorite. Um, and they were down to a uh, minus a dollar sixty. So I bet them in running and made a little extra money. So it was it's good that I was watching that game and keeping an eye on it and was able to get a little extra. Scratch. Very nice. Very nice. Uh, so the Bills this week, um, I don't know, nothing too fascinating about these numbers. They seem pretty straightforward. The Bills opened as five point favorites at Denver. Uh, it is now six points, and you can get it for six and a half at the MGM. Um, let's just stay with that, and then we'll get into the total. Yeah, the line had a little bit of a weird move. Um, as I've mentioned before, as we talked about it last week, the, the Superbook at the Westgate is the best place to to keep an eye on numbers. They put up numbers right away. They move them with pretty good regularity. A lot of people follow them and will move their lines without even taking a bet, just because they see, see their lines move. Um, so the line opened up early, which was on the 8th of December at Bills minus five. But on the 13th, it went down to the Bills minus four um, and has since gone up from there to four and a half, five and a half, six, six and a half for a while, and then back down to six. Um, so it was a pretty interesting move that it came down to four. Um, that, that to me is impressive. It probably came down. I'm not sure of dates. I mean, we're in quarantine. I, I'm living in sweatpants. I don't know the dates. I don't know if it probably came, <laughs> came down uh, when Denver won, but before Buffalo played would be my guess. Um, and then went back up when the Bills won. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's been kind of moving around a little bit. Uh, total's been moving around. We'll get onto that, I guess, now. Total's been moving around from 48 up to 50, up to 50 and a half, now down to 49 and a half. So it's been, it's been moving around. Um, but it's, a, it's, a, it's interesting. The biggest move to me was the fact that the Bills became a four-point favorite for a while um, and then was bet up pretty quickly. And that is, is where it should be. The line, the line that I had in my head was six. Um, so I did not bet it. I probably will. Um, but I, I think for the bill, for the bills themselves, like they know the significance of this game, Denver, uh, sure. They want to win and they're a good team. Um, but you know, if you look at just quarterback to quarterback, uh, stats, you're looking at two completely different quarterbacks and Denver can run the ball. Um, but the reason why they're so successful in running the ball, I think, is because they do it enough because they don't throw that much. They throw off of the run, whereas the Bills pass and then will run off of the pass. So it'll be an interesting game, I think, to see. It'll be a, I think it'll be a fairly close game, uh, but I, I see the Bills winning this game and, and covering. Okay. Uh, what about the total? What's, uh, what would your advice be on, on that? Uh, so one last note, um, yeah. although the bills are 10 and three and the Broncos are five and eight, they are both eight and five against the spread this year. So Denver is, is outperforming their win total uh, and the bills are slightly underperforming their, their wins, um, in terms of covering the spread. Um, the, what's, the that total significance? Is, what's the significance of that to you? Okay. If you I can, elaborate. I, I think the significance. I would I would probably look a lot deeper into it in terms of when Denver is scoring on these games that they lose, uh, if they're scoring in garbage time to make a backdoor cover, um, or if they're just playing really tight games. I'm not super familiar with them as of right now. I will do some more research uh, into their games and the, the scoring and how it comes about. Um, but I think the Bills are, are really firing on all cylinders right now. Um, we've seen that. I mean – if you're looking at the, the Bills, sorry, if you're looking at the Broncos versus the Steelers, I mean, the Steelers are, you, you, you make them a huge favorite, you would think. Um, and the Bills beat them easily. Uh, so they're, they're really clicking. The last, I would say, three or four weeks, the Bills have been really um, playing really, really well on both sides of the ball, on special teams. Um, we have probably the best kick returner on the, on the, in the NFL right now. Um, so we really have the advantage 
over them. Um, they have a slight advantage, I think, in the run game. But again, I think that's because they run more than we do. Um, it doesn't do a team a we, lot of good when they're, when they're trailing. Exactly, exactly. Um, Bills outperform them in passing, in, in time, uh, time of possession, plays, yards per play, special teams. Um, so I think they really um, are a far better team than Denver. Uh, traveling is, traveling is, a, is a big thing. Altitude is a big thing. Weather is a big thing. Uh, we saw the Bills, although they won and could have easily covered and possibly even gone over, um, the weather did was a, a significant factor, especially in the first half of the game. Um, so I think weather is a big thing. I don't, I'd have to look up the weather. I'm sure it's going to be cold and snowy. I don't know what the wind and everything will be quite yet, but I definitely think that that has something to do with, with, with me leaning towards the under of this game. I think under because of weather, because of cold, because of altitude. I also think that the Bills' defense will be uh, really on their game this week like they were last week. So, you know, the Bills' offense can score 30. But if the defense only gives up 14, that's your, there's your under. Um, so I definitely think uh, I'm leaning towards the under on this game. Okay. Um, I looked up some uh... – some factoids uh, regarding the Bills being favored on the road because uh, this is the fifth time this year that the Bills will be favored on the road. And how rare is that? Well, uh, very, uh, because they were only favored twice last year on the road, zero times in 2018, three times in 2017, two times in 2016, three times in 2015, only one time each in 2014, 2013, 2012, and 2011. Zero times in 2010. As you would imagine, that was an awful team. The last time the Bills were favored on the road five times in a season was 1999. The last time it was six times, which is going to be, well, maybe you could tell me what you think is going to happen in New England. Uh, do you think they'll be favored at Foxborough next week? Yeah. Okay, so uh, let's see. Yeah, unless there's catastrophic injuries or the Bills lock up the division and decide they're going to rest everybody, which I doubt they would, um, the Bills will be a field goal favorite in New England. Okay, so that'll be six times. And uh, the last time that's happened was 1992. So the third consecutive season of going to the Super Bowl, that's how far back you have to go to find out uh, what people thought of the Bills on the road. The confidence, uh, very high. Uh, outside the the, uh, the program, inside the program. Uh, confidence is very high in the Bills, very unusual. But I'll say this. They've only covered while favored on the road this year once. They are one in three uh, against the spread uh, on the road. Um, the only two times, by the way, if you're curious, if you're racking your brain, Arizona and San Francisco, the lone times that the Bills weren't favored on the road, and so they covered both of those. Um, what does that mean to you, Joel, that, uh, that the Bills are, are routinely favored on the road now? Yeah, I, I think it's that the – even if you watch uh, any of your football, sports, television programs, the Bills are getting a lot more recognition than they, than they have in the past. Uh, you know, the Bills, when they were – whatever they were early in the season, for the sake of argument, we'll say five and two whatever they were at the seven game mark, they still weren't getting the, the, the press that they uh, are getting now. I mean, if you watch, um, what was the guy with the annoying voice who has the uh, annoying guy who went to Syracuse who hates the bills? What? That, I'm not really, uh, not really helping you out. What there. show? What, uh, what network is like, this? Uh, shoot. Fox, maybe Fox sports. The annoying guy who has the hot picks every week. Oh Christ! I don't know. I don't pay attention. Nick Nick Wright is the guy who's on there. Nick Wright. Oh, is Nick the guy Wright. That, yeah, I know who you're who talking the about. Bills. I've come across who, him who, once or twice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And whatever sh the uh, what show is he on? Who is he talking with? I, I, I that I don't know because I it's like I I just come across him in passing. Uh, but, well, he's been doing yeah. some stuff with Colin Coward. I've seen on uh, that. That's him, Colin Coward. Colin okay, Coward. So this past they have week. some bet this has, week about social media yeah. about the Bills that the fans are up in arms about. I refuse to look at it. Yeah, 
Yeah, Colin Coward actually in his power rankings put the Bills at number one, said that they're better than the Chiefs are right now. I don't know about that. I don't. Yeah, I I, I would uh, beg to differ with his. He's and he's a hot take kind of guy that he wants to. He gets his publicity and his extra press by making these outlandish claims. But I mean, the, the Bills are getting a lot more recognition, uh, you know, from from commentators as well as from from sports books. So as Bills, as Bills fans watch games when they're talking about them on Sunday night and Monday night football, when we played San Francisco, it was all, all they were talking about was the Bills missed a kick in the Super Bowl and the, the 49ers are awesome. Like, that's all they talk about. Whenever we talk about the Bills, it's wide right, it's Music City Miracle, it's 17 years without being in the playoffs, it's haven't won the division since 1995, and they're not talking about the Bills now. But when you look at the numbers on the boards uh, at the sports books, you, they are getting the, the recognition that they deserve because people are taking them a lot more seriously um, in these games. Yeah, it's uh, it's interesting. I, I mean, I, I just thought it was odd. I decided to look it up before we came on. We probably should have been talking about it last week because that would have been. Well, no, you got to go back. Um, that was a home game last week, but they've they've surpassed. You know, You'd have to go back to 1999 to uh, four. I mean, f- when they were at four uh, road games in which they were favored, that was still the first time since 1999. Um, it's been pretty bleak, but um, encouraging, <laughs> encouraging to see that if you're a Bills fan. Sure. But, uh, and they're coming Definitely. through. They're winning these games, and they might not be covering necessarily, but they're winning these games you're getting to the point where you expect them to win these games and it's being reflected in, uh, in the betting. Um, any bonus picks for us this week, Joel? We got a couple. We got a couple. Um, okay. Indianapolis Colts minus seven. Uh, a big, another big, there's a lot of big favorites this week. A lot of big favorites. I uh, stayed away from most of them, but Tennessee minus 11. Uh, I really like that one. I, I mean, I don't want to lay huge, huge numbers, uh, but I, I don't even know exactly where you can get uh, tennis, or Tennessee right now. I think it's a big thing with um, Stafford. Is Stafford playing? Who's playing? Who's backing him up? Um, but if, if everything goes as I think, um, Tennessee, and my best bet, we're going to mark this one down twice. This is a double better. Uh, <laughs> the Washington football team plus six uh, at home against Seattle, Washington football team plus six at home hosting the Seahawks. That, that line is about five points too high. And uh, why do you like that? Because the home team is so heavily favored. Yeah. Yeah. But that line is way too inflated. Um, Washington, is, I think they've won like something like four straight games. Uh, they're a, a fairly solid team offensively and defensively. Uh, we know Seattle has zero defense, uh, so I, I think I like really, really like Washington plus six to this week. All right, so to recap those bets, Indianapolis minus seven against Houston, Tennessee minus 11 against Detroit, Washington plus six against Seattle. All of those are the home teams Joel is going with. Uh, they are hosting each one of those, and he also says take the bills and give the points. Right now it's at minus six and uh, the under, which is somewhere between 49 and 50 uh, yep. and uh, sprinkled, uh, sprinkled a half point here or there, uh, wherever you want to do your shopping, if you can do your shopping. Um, yep. All right, Joel. Well, that's a rather comprehensive look at, uh, at the bills and uh, week 16, sorry, week 15. I don't want it to end uh, too soon. Although there are probably a lot of Bills fans that are ready just to get right to the postseason. Uh, there still are three games left to be played. Um, yeah, I think the Bills, the Bills, if they win out, they still only have like a 3% chance of a, of a first-round bye. Um, so it'll be interesting to see how they play out. I mean, one game at a time, obviously. Um, if they win this game, they've, they've locked up the division. They've locked up uh, the playoffs. So it'd be interesting to see what they choose to do uh, when it comes to playing all these starters, full games, half games, uh, you know, resting them for health like they're doing with John Brown this week. 
uh, it'd be really interesting to see what they what they do going forward to to finish out the season. All right, Joel Staniszewski on the line from Vegas, giving us his picks uh, for the Bills and some bonus, and uh, also giving us some tunes as he has been at the bumper you're about to hear the end of everything again, and make sure to check out the link uh, that I posted uh, on Twitter. Um, Maybe I'll try to do something fancy and embed it in this video somehow. I mean, I'm still picking up video production skills, uh, Joel. Uh, This isn't uh, my expertise, but I'm doing what I can to remain relevant in uh, in 2020. Uh, Thanks again for joining us. Thanks. 